are extremely pleased that you are here. One day, Esther was visiting a very famous artist, and Jerry and Esther were in her gallery, and they were looking at all of this work. Some of it not for sale, some of it for sale, all of it beautifully lighted. And Esther saw something that reached her, and she said, how long did it take you to paint that? And the woman said, 73 years. <laughs> because she had a sense that in the what was a now moment that she painted it, that everything that she was, was happening. And that's what we want you to get a glimpse of. We want you to feel the importance of who you are coming into this body and who you've been every step along the way and what you've broadcast vibrationally as a result of what you were living and where that vibration now stands and we want you to be one of those masters who understands the laws of the universe and gets a handle on your own vibrational frequency and just a little more than you've been doing this is not a big assignment this just a little more than you've been doing Allow yourself the luxury of a quiet space with nothing haranguing at you, where your phone isn't requesting your attention, where no one is requesting your attention, where your vortex can get your attention, where what you've really created and what is created and what is your hopes and dreams, what is the future that you have created and that exists and what is the future that you cannot deny yourself of allowing to manifest without feeling a diminishment in your life experience. You want to discover the true power of who you are? You've got to be vortex oriented. You want to understand the true power of who you are, who you really are, the vibrational nature of your being? You want to witness with your own eyes in real time the cooperative universe? Huh. And since then, the stream of manifestations, Esther sorting through a pile that she's had for months of things that people have sent to her and reaches in and pulls out a letter from someone who is a landscape architect who will help in this project and Esther could feel it when the paper was shaking in her hands. So many pieces. There's not enough time in your physical life for us to explain to you the details <laughs> of what's unfolding. But what we would like you to feel is that each piece of it that was happening in real time, Esther could feel the wholeness of everything that she and Jerry had ever been in the present moment. Everything that they had ever been and all that they currently are. Sometimes a musician catches a glimpse of that and creates a masterpiece that lasts forever. Sometimes it's a writer. You usually assign it to those kind of creative geniuses. But what it really is is someone just like you who got the basics down, who understood that your inner being is the larger part of you and that part of you is offering a vibration. And it's a vibration that is so thrilling. It's a vibration of wisdom and absolute knowing. And it translates to you when you're lined up with it in the form of love and appreciation and exhilaration beyond our ability to describe it. It's things like sublime, it's clarity, it's bigness, it's wholeness, it's empowerment, it's a feeling of invincibility. That's how your inner being rolls. And you stand in your now experience, focusing in some way with an active vibration that is playing in relationship to that. So you've got this mix of vibrations going on and you have the ability to have conscious awareness of that. And by caring about how you feel, not by caring about what you're creating. This is what we most want you to hear from this story that we've offered. Very often, Esther goes back to the treehouse as a symbol, as a surefire point of focus where she can find alignment just by focusing upon it. She remembers the day that she and Jerry walked onto these 40 acres and there was no structure on it. And they walked into an area and Jerry said, look at these trees, there were six of them. And he said, we could put a treehouse in here. 
and they laid down in the leaves and looked up and tried to figure out how high the treehouse would be. Went and dragged a ladder, brought a ladder, climbed up into the tree, tried to figure it out, and then got several men to come and help them build the treehouse as they kept dreaming of another story and another story and another story and then put a switch back on it so Esther could get up because the rope ladder was too hard to climb with the computer in her arms. <laughs> so now that treehouse stands on the property and it is an amazing place to be. You can feel the energy of it. You'll like it if you ever visit it. But the thing that we want you to hear from this is when Esther thinks about that treehouse, she doesn't think about the treehouse as it now stands in its now reality. She thinks about the treehouse when it was in her dream state. She thinks about it before there was a board gathered, before there was a nail, before it was a structure. She thinks of it as it was in the process of becoming. It's the magic of the men coming. That tree house took longer to build than a normal house because anyone who worked on it didn't want it to ever be done. It's six-sided. It's weird. <laughs> Can you sort of feel the energy of it? Do you believe that your vortex has the ingredients of a daydream for you? Do you believe that if you just relax, that it will come into your mind effortlessly? And have we transmitted to you clearly enough that your work isn't to go make a daydream. Your work is to get yourself into the receptive mode where you can dream one, where it can come to you, where you can receive it, where you can receive a pictorial of the coming together of the ingredients that all that you have lived has put there. Can you feel the bigness of that? And can you feel that once you start dreaming it and allowing yourself the often familiarity of it, that the power of that will attract an avalanche of the most exciting, tuned in, tapped in, turned on, lined up, ready to play with you, co-creators that you can imagine. You have a phrase, you say, beyond my wildest dreams. That's what's going on there. But it doesn't have to be beyond your ability to dream it. All right, now we got way out there. We got way out there. You asked for it. We got way out there into the realm of your true power. Did you feel it? Did you catch a glimpse of it? Can you feel that? Yeah, do the process and make yourself feel better. Yes. And let life come at you and have knee-jerk responses to it. You can't do anything other than that. But every now and again, give yourself the luxury of setting yourself up for maybe the possibility of being in the vicinity of your vortex and let the dreams occur. These are manifestations. And the thing about these dreams, this is why one who's under the influence of source is more powerful than a million who are not. Can you comprehend that? Can you get that? The reason is because in the daydream, there is no resistance. There's no resistance. There's no belief holding you back. There's no anything that you've lived holding you back. It's a clear space where your true power can be realized by you. First in the form of a daydream and then in the form of a sequence of events that you cannot deny as people that you're meeting come into your life and you and probably only you know why they're sitting next to you on the airplane right now. Esther got on a Southwest flight after this dream happened to her and she said, hello, hello. Actually, she was there first on the aisle. She had to get up. And then she said, hello, hello. <laughs> and the woman said, you sound like Esther. <laughs> Esther said, really? <laughs> and then the reason that the universe put them there together became abundantly clear. As they got out their iPad and began demonstrating the power of who they are. No question in Esther's mind why she rendezvoused with them. You see what we're getting at? If you've dreamed it, if you are willing to do the work, which means just find a place to feel good. Big sacrifice, we know. <laughs> find that place in time where you can feel good. And then you consciously realize the daydream. We call it a daydream because you're awake. The daydream and then you get to witness the things falling into place that all fit into that 
then and only then will you get it why we call you master only then will you understand the power of who you really are and what your life is meant to be you didn't come to in a mediocre way just move things around you didn't come to just bang around with other people you came to bang around with other people but you didn't come to just bang around with other people you came around to bang around with other people to launch desires you came around to bang around with other people to build a vortex and you have built a vortex and it's time for you to find a way to let your vortex deliver to you what it knows you have put there and what the combining of that is we have enjoyed this interaction more than any that has been before it's a good time for a segment of the session.